I love to film in the evening, whether it's music videos or short films, the evening is my favorite time to film. From the soft, even light to the golden haze, it has a sense of production value that just isn't found at midday or at night, and it can really help sell your video even if you're using low budget equipment. But replicating this light indoors with a low budget, perhaps just one light, provides a number of challenges. Let's look at how we can overcome them. Admittedly, uh, this isn't necessarily a practical tutorial, but more of a theoretical tutorial because honestly, uh, there's not much to tell you other than putting the light on the stand, making sure the color temp is warmer than the color scene, voila, you have evening light. However, I think it's important to know why evening light has a different color and a different direction, so you can take this information and employ it differently or perhaps create something entirely new. Typically, three things will happen with the evening light. It becomes softer, warmer, and lower in height. First, why does the light become warmer than golden? The reason why we have golden hour is due to the position of the sun and the density of our atmosphere. When the sun is highest in the sky, midday to late afternoon, there is very little interference from our atmosphere and all spectrums of the light equally disperse, presenting what we would consider as white light. However, just after sunset and just before sunrise, the sun is just about level to the horizon and the light has to travel through many miles of dense atmosphere and the blue and violet frequencies scatter more easily in the atmosphere, leaving more red, yellow, and orange to pass through, which gives the light that beautiful warm glow. That golden hour sun sits around about a color temperature of 3500 Kelvin, which is the same color temperature as a tungsten bulb. So there are gonna be two things that we can do to replicate that evening glow. Use a tungsten lamp or use a daylight balance lamp with some C2O gel. However, as noted, that is gonna be around about the 3500 Kelvin mark, and that might not necessarily be what the color temperature of the light is around about 7 p.m. So you're gonna to have to mess around with the gels. You can get different strengths of C2O and CTB gels or mess around with the white balance on your camera. Now that's just one aspect of evening light and the next is direction. So if we were to emulate daylight, midday to say 4 p.m. Uh, in an interior location, we would look to bounce some light into the scene to a soft, uh, ambient, or if on a stage, use diffused overhead lighting. And this is so there's not a lot of shadows, not a lot of contrast, because of course the sun is gonna be completely parallel to the building, and there's not gonna be a lot of directional sunlight coming in through the windows. But evening light, it's a little bit different. So I'm using Cine Tracer, which is a previous software by Matt Workman, and it allows you to build and light your set before doing it in the real world. And it's also a great tool to demonstrate lighting examples. So I've created a little suburb here and we can see due to the small flat shadows under the plants and the car, it's midday. The sun is 90 degrees high in the sky. Now, if we shift into this restaurant scene, we can get a better example of how the evening light affects the composition. Oh, this is Dave, uh, his former girlfriend, Jenny, because she's just arrived and seen he was having dinner with another lady. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a different story for a different day. So now if I bring up the sun settings and start to lower the angle, which is what will happen later into the day when the sun sets, the light will enter the room softer than the harsh midday sun, but because it's lower, and still relatively bright, it will start to cast elongated shadows. And this light will reach from the window to the back wall. So it's important to have your light angled at a reflection of the time of the day you're trying to recreate because if you angle your light say at 120 degrees and it's supposed to be very late into the evening, something may look off with your scene. However, we come to the grand problem of no budget and low budget filmmaking. And that is how do we replicate this large source in the sky with something like an entry level Fresnel or an Aperture 120D, as while they might be bright, they're hard lights, meaning they come from a small source, and that's gonna create hard contrast. And although we can diffuse them, once we start to diffuse a small source, the light fall off isn't gonna be that great in the way that the evening sun would still power through a location. So the answer, you don't. This is why, if you ever see any behind the scenes material or films or TV shows when they emulate the sunlight coming from a window, it's typically done by several large lights on condo cranes because with such a large source, you can still replicate the softness of the evening light but also emit enough of it to cause those elongated shadows like the sun. Therefore, as low budget filmmakers, I implore you not to try and illuminate the entire scene, but just add a splash of golden light into the scene as if filtered through an open door. These clips are from various projects I've created over the years and where I've employed this technique. And unfortunately, I didn't have the foresight of grabbing many behind the scenes clips or stills of my lighting setup, but I can walk you through the process. 
See, in a lot of these locations, I didn't have the light power to illuminate the entire scene as the evening sun would, but instead, I would fill the scene with soft ambient light, then add a dash of evening light in the background. It gives the appearance that the sun has swept through the blinds or an open door somewhere, and that soft golden glow instantly sets the time. We know the setting sun casts long shadows, so bring your actor close to the window and have the light angled where the blinds or nets will cast shadows, because around midday, while the sun may come through the window, often it's just going to land close to your feet and not your face, because sometimes it's not so much about showing the audience, but using suggestive symbols that are recognised. So to summarise, make sure your light is warmer than your composition's white balance, 3500K is great for golden hour. Make sure the light is positioned at an angle relative to the time of the day, so for the evening, more than 90, but less than 180 degrees. And just look to add a touch of warm light to suggest it's the evening, instead of trying to illuminate the entire scene, because without several large light sources, it's not going to look that great. Alright guys, my name is Lewis, we have Shutterstock Tutorials, and I will catch you next time. Remember to do all the good stuff, subscribe, like, comment, and uh, see you with the next tutorial.